All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about how you can help me move. <laughs> now, in all reality, in all truth, with all moves, as I'm sure many of you guys are aware, usually comes with a downside of downsizing. So I'm going to be doing just that with this video. And today we're going to be doing a little bit of what I like to call like a virtual yard sale. So I'm going to be going over some knives for sale. And as far as it goes, like for pricing and everything, I'm going to leave my contact information where you guys can reach out out to me in the description below. I'm going to leave the list of knives down in the description below with their price. So this video is just going to be going over all the knives because there are a bunch of them. So we're just going to quickly like lightning round, go through all of them. And before we get started, you know, even if you are just interested in these knives, just go down to the description below. I will also keep it up to date whether they are available or not available. So as they get sold, I will note that in the description below. So Go down there, check it out, see what's for sale, and hopefully you guys can snag some awesome knives. I know there are definitely some knives on this list that people will really, really want. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoy this video and hopefully this is a fun one. And lastly, before we get into it, thank you for your support of the channel and of me in advance. So hopefully you guys can snag some cool knives and some awesome blades for you to continue to use and play with in the field. So let's jump right into it. All right, guys, so we're gonna be looking at a ton of knives, but first off, before we jump into it, every one that uh, you guys buy, every knife or like every person that buys a knife, will be getting some cool Alaskan Frontier One stickers. These things, because I have a bunch of them and because they're pretty cool and might as well throw them out there. So if you do purchase any of these knives, whether it's one or 10 or whatever, you will get some stickers. Not quite sure how many stickers will go in each package, but there will be some for sure. Anyways, that aside, let's jump into it. So first off, and I'm going likely most expensive to likely least expensive, but there are, the prices haven't really been fully determined just yet. All right, so first one up is going to be the JBK Layman. Now this one is a full custom knife that was custom made for me, at least in specifications and thickness. It is a little bit of a standardized um, actual blade, but this guy is pretty darn cool and is probably one of the ones that I am the most sad to see go. But to be honest, like I said, I do have to really pare my knife collection down to the essentials, especially when it comes to wilderness blades. And I have a lot of blades in this category that do very similar things. So this guy is very cool though. Um, it uses, I think it's 8670 tool steel. And one of my favorite parts about this is that it has a tapered tang. You rarely ever see that on a fixed blade. So it makes it incredibly comfortable, incredibly useful. And it's blade thickness, while like I said, it does taper in both directions. It's stock blade thickness is 5 30 seconds of an inch thick. So it's still fairly robust. Obviously out at the very tip, it would not be, but you know, towards the uh, center is going to be pretty darn robust overall. So that is this guy. It is definitely a user, but it is not like a heavy user as you guys can see. It's still pretty awesome. And it is coming in a Bark River Knives Aurora sheath. So this is an original Aurora sheath for my very original Bark River Knives Aurora. This is my extra sheath and it has a pretty chunky um, ferro rod that comes with it. So you guys will see, or it comes as you guys see here, and it is pretty darn freaking cool. So that is the JBK Layman. And once again, it is one that I'm sad to see, but, or sad to see go, but it is a pretty awesome knife and definitely, hopefully it can go to a home where it will see some good use. All right, next one up is going to be another one that I'm sad to see go, and that is the uh, Half Face Blades Extremis Mark One. I. I do really like this knife. It's actually pretty cool for ADC, but once again, this is one that I just don't use enough to justify leaving it in the collection. So this is the Extremis Mark One. This is a limited edition one. I believe I have the box with this one. If I do, I will send it. But this one is an S45 VN as opposed to S35 VN, and of course, it is in black and red G10 with its of course, stock Kydex sheath and ulti clip there. So this guy is pretty darn cool. It is definitely one that I will be missed. All right, next one up and one that does not like to stay in its sheath that much is the LT Wright Legum. Now this is one that I did not think I would ever sell, but to be honest for me and my like 
personal collection. This is one that does sit around a lot because I don't love using it because it is such a cool knife. So for me, I am getting rid of it because I just never use it, partly because I don't want to use it because it's too cool, too collectible to me. And so I am getting rid of it because someone else can honestly put this blade to work. Now, as far as this blade goes, it is 01 tool steel. I did blue it. So you guys will notice it has have a darker appearance than a normal legum or legum or legome. And it is of course in orange G10, blaze orange G10. And uh, as far as this one goes, it does come with its stock sheath and it also comes with a ferro rod. Now this ferro rod has been used a bit, of course, in conjunction with this knife, but it is an orange pair. So yeah, that is the LT Wright Legum. All right, next one up is going to be the Pull Force November 1. The Pull Force November 1, or at least this one, is a classic. You really can't find them anymore. And this is a pretty darn cool knife if you are a collector or just like super, super rare blades. Keep putting my knives over here. But this is the no November 1. Now, this one is a user for sure, and uh, the price will reflect that. However, I did take this blade um, to my Wicked Edge, and I did put a really nice, I want to say 17 degree per side angle uh, on this guy, but it is very nice, very clean, and it is a dull mirror polish that is super slicey. So while this one was a user, I did professionally, or maybe not professionally, but I did put it on a professional sharpener and sharpen it up to make it really nice. So you are getting a really clean edge, does not have any like nicks or damage in it. So everything is pretty darn good on this blade. So for this one, a little bit of background, it is using Nylox steel and it is made by Lion Force in, or Lion Steel, sorry, not Lion Force, Lion Steel in Italy. And of course it will come with its Kydex sheath. Okay guys, next one up is going to be another one that I'm sad to see go, but it is the SE6. And this is my good old reliable SE6. In fairness, it actually does look like it's in pretty good condition, but it has seen a lot of use. I did take the bevel back to 17 degrees per side, so it is super, super slicey. But outside of that, it is pretty clean and uh, it has seen a fair amount of use, but the edge that it has right now is pretty good. There's like no dense nicks, chips in it at all. So it is a good clean edge and comes as you guys see it ready to be used as a scout style uh, carry. So there you go. All right. Next one up is going to be the Wooks. And this guy here is the Rock 62, as it literally says on it. And this one is a knife that I never really was a huge fan of, so it really hasn't seen a whole lot of use. This one, honestly, if whoever buys this, I would recommend getting some micarta scales because these plastic ones or these ones that are on it right now are really cool in theory, but really chunky and thick. But outside of that, the steel and the blade, as far as it goes, is pretty solid. I mean, it is made out of Sleipner steel, um, I believe sourced from lion steel or at least bowler i believe is who makes Sleipner, and of course this is made in the u.s so it is still a quality knife i'd also definitely recommend getting another sheath for it but the price will reflect those two things this one's going to be fairly uh, affordable for you guys because it's not something that i'm a huge fan of i don't necessarily want to pass a terrible knife on for like an extreme price all right Next one up that I'm sad to see go is my heavily used, as you guys can tell here, um, Buck Thug. Now this guy is a user, and once again, the price will reflect that partially. This thing might be a little bit more expensive than some people expect, but I'm wanting to keep the price a little bit higher because Buck Thugs, Buck Punks, Buck, um, gosh, what is the other one? Ho hoodlum, there we go. Uh, the Buck Hoodlum, Thug, and Punk are all very elusive knives, and you really cannot get them. They've been discontinued for years, so these things just don't pop up. So that's why this one's going to be a little bit more expensive, but at the same time, too, it is, as you guys can see, pretty heavily used. So um, we will see what the price ends up being on this guy, but the Buck Thug is going on the chopping block. Not to say that it's not an amazing knife. I honestly love the Thug, and honestly, this one's probably going to get snapped up really fast because it is a really solid knife and they're made out of 5160 tool steel or spring steel I should say so you can literally pound on these things for days and they do not break all right now getting into some smaller knives the SC3 so the SC3 once again a smaller knife this one is definitely a user you guys can see here um, I don't think I've actually put this one on the wicked edge this one might actually need an edge but um, 
I don't know, it still feels fairly sharp. Anyways, so this guy's definitely a user, as you can see, and the price will reflect that, but it's a pretty cool blade. I did take this portion of the spine coating off and blued it so that it could strike ferro rods with greater ease. So do note that, but outside of that, I mean, it just has general use and is still in fairly good shape. Then next one up, we have the Spartan Blades Alala. And this guy has seen some use. It honestly hides it pretty well, but this guy I just never really used. It's an okay like EDC blade. Like for me, I'm not a huge fan of EDC fixed blades, but it is a more robust EDC fixed blade. So kind of cool, but yeah, if it's your style, it's your jam, then cool. It is made out of 1095 CV, which is the same steel that K-Bar uses for their knives. So take that for what it's worth. All right, the next ones I'm gonna do are gonna be bundles. So these are just gonna be like what I consider budget bundles. So these are each gonna be like $100 for the bundle. If you don't like it, you don't like it. But the first one up is going to be my Cold Steel SRK, the Mora Bushcraft Black, and then a Mora Companion. So all those guys together for like a hundred bucks. And then I think this one's gonna be like $80, but it's going to be the Mora Consbool, the Condor Pterosaur, and a more clipper once again for like 80 bucks so they're just budget budget bundles of knives and uh yeah so anyways guys that is all the knives that i'm going to be selling once again i'm going to list them in the description below with price points on everything and how you guys can contact me if you want any one of these knives um definitely let me know and uh you know reach out we can work something out anyways guys as always god bless and i'm out